Hello, this is Gernge with another quick tip video. Have you ever asked for a cloner and random effector setup to spread textures onto a material? Well, today's video will be covering just that by introducing the random texture OSL node in Redshift. This goes by a few names like texture bombing or texture scattering, but you'll get the idea of it pretty quick. Our demo scene here today is a little trash can with a grungy material to it. Now we'll be adding a ton of stickers to this guy because it's looking a bit plain, and you'll see just how easy this is. All you need is a folder of images that have alpha channels and the OSL node. Now this is just one of many potential applications of this script. You could use it to randomly spread textures across anything, really. The possibilities with this are endless. Starting things off, we've got our metal material, which is mixing a few things from Megascans. We'll hop over to the Redshift OSL repository on GitHub, scroll down to the random textures.osl, click it, select the code, and then copy it. Hopping back to Redshift, we'll create an OSL node, paste and replace the code, then click Compile. First, we have the overall scale. This scales the result of each image, as you'd expect. Then we have this category, which we shouldn't need to worry much about, so we'll just collapse that for now. Then our list of image textures. We can drag in the PNGs from our example folder into each slot. Now it's important to note that however many textures you have listed here, you'll want to match the corresponding layers number up here as well. Now that we've input our image textures, it's probably a good time to connect this to our color layer. We'll make sure that our layer is enabled. As this refreshes, we see that the texture size is a bit too large, so I'm gonna lower my scale. Next thing worth pointing out is we have a black background color, which is right here, and a corresponding alpha value. So we'll lower down that alpha, which will allow us to reveal our underlying grunge sort of green metal. That's looking quite nice now. Moving on down to the randomization section, we've got a lot of usual suspects here. We've got seed, which works as you would expect it to. We have probability. Now this is from zero to one, basically how many clones. So as we lower this, we see that we get fewer and fewer textures. Next, we've got position random. Currently it's at 0.5, which is the middle point for each texture being able to shift up, down, left, or right. So if we do zero and zero, we'll see that this is a nearly uniform grid. So you might be able to make use of this in, in a creative way, but I want much more randomization, so I'll try 0.75. Scale min and max work off of a baseline of one. So inputting slightly smaller than one for the scale min will shrink textures, and inputting slightly larger decimals than one will allow us to scale up the textures. There's also rotation min and rotation max. Now these work in each direction, so a minus 30 min will allow 30 degrees rotation in that direction. A positive 30 in max will allow up to 30 degrees rotation in that direction. You've also got HSV or hue saturation value. A one in the first value, which corresponds to hue, allows for a color tint. Now, if you're comfortable reading code and you're curious of the other settings, you can pop over to the code, the OSL tab, and scrub through some of this list and maybe find some important information. Again, only if you're curious. So I'm gonna configure the settings to my liking for this trash can since I really want it to look sticker bombed like from a large city. And guess what? You can set up multiple of these OSL nodes and stack them through one another if you need more than this number of textures. Now while setting this up, it's worth mentioning I don't believe there's a way to contain the spread of the images. The node operates off of the UVs of your object, so keep in mind it'll spread across the entire surface. All right, I've added some surface imperfections on top of the stickers to dirty up the trash can and adjust the roughness a bit, and I think I'm quite happy with it for now. I hope this quick tip introducing the random texture OSL script serves you well. There really are a lot of potential uses for this, so please enjoy trying it out yourself. And if you do make something cool using this, I'd love to see your results.